Again, it can be another way, an easier way. I used to teach a class called The Inner Game of Writing. It was modeled after my work with Tim Galwin, who wrote The Inner Game of the Tennis and co-authored several other inner game books. When I discovered was what we have to do is at least two distinct beings within us, not personality so much as aspects of our mind. Galway called them self one, self two. Self one could be like lead, like into your ego, the part of you that wants to control. Self one is your ego, the part of you that wants to control. Self two can be like into your inner master within you, the part of you that is connected to all things. The job self one is selected that of what you want and let go. Job of self one is to select what you want and let go. Job self two is to bring it to you. Galway learned that when people learn to let go and trust, they got what they wanted more often than not, and it came much easier than if they fought for it. The same concept works in your life. Choose what you want and let God or the universe, whatever that means to you, bring it to you. Let the orchestrate of the events that will manifest this thing into your desire. Give up needing to know how you will manifest anything. Knowing how can become a limit a limitation. If you choose to manifest something, you can consciously see a way to create it. You may you may give up. The conscious mind can't see all the possibilities. Some are to control and you free the universe to bring you whatever you want. Tough to swallow? Then let me tell you a story. Lost Secrets Miracle. Lost Secrets Miracle. When I was working on one of my earlier books, The Seven Lost Secrets of Success, I was obsessed. I spent two years of my life on a mission to pay homage to Bruce Barton, a man who influenced our country, but somehow fell through the cracks of history. One day I received a call a medical doctor who was in Texas. He wanted to hire me for a ghost write of a book for him, although I was reluctant. Going to see him felt like the right thing to do. I flew there, visited with him, and negotiated a contract and flew back to Houston with a large check in my hand, a non-refundable retainer to hire me to write this book. Weeks passed, then months. During the time I spent most of the energy working on the, my Barton book, I rarely worked on the Doc's book, and I never heard from him. I finally decided to should fly up to see him, and I should present some material to him, so I made a flight reservation and started writing on his book. But an odd thing happened. Whenever I called the doctor's office, no one answered the phone, and I went on for days and days before my flight was to leave. Someone answered the phone, and it was the Doc's business manager. Bill, this is Joe Vitale, I began. Hi, Joe. His voice seemed sheepish. What's going on? Well, no one answers the phone there for days. Well, there's been a change in plans. What? Bill mumbled something. I asked him to repeat it. I couldn't believe what I heard. The doc's in jail, he said. I say I was stunned. Would this be a lie? I was shocked. Speeches. The doc's in jail, I blurted. Bill, what's going on? Well, doc violated his parole again, and he was shocked. It's meant that he's been in jail before. Well, the doc sent a bomb of his ex-wife and was caught on sent sent a bomb sent a bomb to his ex-wife and was caught and sent to prison. Bill explained he was allowed to come out to be a doctor again if he couldn't pay with the guns and bombs anymore. Don't tell me, I said. Yeah, they found bombs in his desk. It took me a while to recover from this event, but I wanted you to notice the miracle here is when I signed a contract with the doctor, it was given a large sum of money, non-refundable money, money that enabled me to work on my Barton book, and when I was able, the doctor went to jail, I was freed from the contract. I didn't have to write this book at all, even trying to give me the money back, which I wasn't obligated to do. It was pointless. The doc was gone. Somehow, God was in the universe from whatever you want to call the invisible powers that be. Set the stage for a grand event. Could I have, out, could I have orchestrated such an event? It's highly unlikely. How would I have written the ad? Doctor Wanted must be an ex-con want to write a book and be readily to go back to jail in six months so I can keep his money. I don't think so. The partner needs clear too. Your partner needs clear too. Again, when you know what you want and you are clear, you will draw to the things that you want and the events pull it to you. Jonathan Caesar what happened all the time when two doctors in Seattle couldn't agree on an office space they needed. They went to Jonathan. After one session, they were all clear within 24 hours and they found the space they needed and signed a lease for it. I saw the same thing happen to me and my ex-wife and I wanted to buy the house together many years ago while we were still married, of course. If you're trying to manifest something that involves another person, both of you have to be clear before you can manifest the event. I had worked on myself to buy a house I wanted, and these things still weren't working out. Finally, my ex-wife went to see Jonathan. She cleared up some old beliefs about self-worth and money, and the very next day, the self-real estate people called. Three days later, we moved into the house, and this was after 12 months of delays. Would you like an example from the world of business? Change the inner to change the outer. Dan Pointer is a dear friend of internationally recognized expert of self-published. He's written several books, including the famous self-published manual. The Self-Publishing Manual. Dan also conducts weekend seminars in his home, the self-published market of your own book. He's been offering the seminars for over 10 years and helped hundreds of people from which always struggle to get their people to register for the event. And one day, Dan called me for help. Joe, I wanted you to write me a brochure for me, a, bro a brochure so powerful that people would sign up for my seminar without even having to do, without me having to do anything. Notice what Dan was asking. He knew what he, wa he didn't want. 
He knew what he didn't want, to pull teeth to get people to come to his seminar, and he knew what he did want, to have people call and register easily and effortlessly. From those two steps, he was led to calling me, and then I agreed to create a new brochure for Dan. What did he have to do? Let go. He had to let go. He just had to trust that he hired the right guy, and all would be well. Although he didn't know it, letting go is the key step to the attractor factor process, and he was intuitively following it. I designed a flyer for Dan, and he loved it, and he printed it. A few weeks later, I called him and asked. He said, my seminar is already sold out. It is, I yelled, delighted, but Dan stopped me in my tracks. But it isn't due to your flyer, he said. It isn't? The seminar sold out weeks ago, and I was only mailed it out a new flyer last week. There had been a delay in the mailing. Then what happened, I asked. Why did it sell out? Well, Dan didn't know, but here's my guess. As you know by now, the energy from which you give out brings the results. And Dan stated in his new intention, he allowed me to create a new flyer for him. But in changing the inner signals from what you're sending out, once you change the way you are on the inside, the outer world changes. Dan didn't even know or didn't even have to mail his flyer out. And people picked up the signals in the air and they responded, crazy, maybe so. But I pointed out throughout this book, the energy that you give off attracts and creates the results that you get. Change your energy, energy and you change your results. And for the record, I later saw Dan in Chicago where he told me that due to my new brochure for him in August, seminar sold out in, in the previous June. My Nightingale Conant Miracle. My Nightingale Conant Miracle. The following story reveals how one of the greatest dreams and my greatest dreams came true. And I'm sharing it with you in hopes that it will help inspire you to go for your own dreams. It's all about the power of setting the intention and then letting go of it. If you've never seen the famous Nightingale Conant giant catalog of audio tapes and business, motivational self-help and relationships, health and spirituality, reach over the phone right now and call 1-800-525-9000 or visit the site at www.nightingale.com. Request the catalog. It's free and well worth browsing. I wanted to have an audio program of my own in the Nightingale Con catalog for many years. I wanted it to have prestige as well as for some profit. I wanted it among their rosters of greats, Tony Robbins, Tom Peters, Deepak Chopra, Bob Proctor, Brian Tracy, and Wayne Dyer. But until autumn 1998, the desire had only been a dream. Despite the fact that I was always sending Nightingale Con in my new books as soon as they were published, I could never get them to seem to ignite their interest in my work. But I never gave up, simply held on to my dream, trusted that something would get sooner or later, and I kept doing my thing, writing from which I hoped was inspiring and informative books. And then something amazing happened. One day I began sending an email asking numerous questions about marketing in general, and the P.T. Barnum in particular. He was one of my fans of the Barnums, and he loved my book. There's a customer born every minute. I answered all of the questions. I'm glad to help. I answered all of his questions. I'm glad to have helped. Then, one day I received a shock. This man sent me a mail saying, If you ever want your material considered by Nightingale Conant, let me know. I'm their marketing project manager. You can't imagine my surprise or my delight. I immediately FedExed all of my books, my video, and my home study courses, six audio tapes and workbooks to my new friend at the Nightingale Conant. He didn't like anything else I sent. Instead, he loved everything I sent. And right then and there, we began a long process of selling Nightingale Conant on me. He became my guardian angel, my charismatic and Christmas team, my Christmas time. At Christmas time, he took down the star from the top company Christmas tree and placed it with a photo of me. He took pictures of me and placed it throughout the offices of Nightingale Conant, including the men's and women's bathrooms. After 11 months of calls, faxes, FedExes, and lots of photos of me, I'm proud to announce that Nightingale Conant is carrying the first product by me. It's called The Power of Outrageous Marketing and has been a bestseller for more for them for more than three years now. It's an amazing story. It eliminates many less, eliminates, illustrates many lessons. The Power of a Dream. I held my vision of what I wanted for years, the power of a dream, the networking potential of the internet by Nightingale Conant contacted, found me in the, by my website through the networking potential of the internet. The miracle that comes from having someone who believes in you, my contact believes in me to a staggering degree and told me so over and over again for 11 months. It's to have the miracle is having someone who believes in you. The true magic that occurs is when you are aligned with your life's purpose and doing what makes your heart sing and the power of letting go. I'm sure that there are other lessons in the story, lessons that you see and I don't. Again, I'm sharing this with you in a way that hopes to set your own heart on fire, awaken something in your soul and urges you to go for it and get your own dreams. And here's something else to think about. Thy will be done. According to the research done by Spindiff Foundation on the power of prayer, thy will be done. Prayers get more than twice as results for a specific give me this prayer. And that's why it's so important to end the request of many things from which you want in the magic words is this is something better. This is something better. When I was writing my book for P.T. Barnum, there's a customer born every minute. I went to the famous showman's grave in the Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I have moving experience there from which I wrote about in my book. 
and I want to share this with you here, as I saw written in my Bardem's gravesite maker, to a surprise carved in a simple Crete stone headstone from where the magic words, words of Barnum relied throughout his colorful life. Not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, but thine be done. Those magical words worked for Barnum, helping him survive personal and professional disasters and to become one of the most American first millionaires, one of America's first millionaires. And those words can work for you too. In other words, trust the universe. Want something better? You can ask yourself whatever you want to do, be, or have, and also be willing for the universe to give you that something better. End all your requests with the phrase, this or something better, this or something better. And you will be letting the universe know that thy will be done is the highest of all importance. Why is this so? Because the universe can see the big picture while your ego can't. Your job is to ask what you want and then to act on the inner nudges that get you to those things. Like... Make a phone call, write letters, visit a certain person, whatever. Bob Proctor in his own wonderful book, You Were Born Rich, puts it in this way. Learn to follow the quiet voice within that speaks in the feelings rather than words. Follow what you hear inside rather than any other people, what other people might be telling you to do. Follow what you hear on the inside. Follow what you hear on the inside. The universe itself will act to move to you for what you want and move to what you want and which you want. And the universe itself will act to move you to what you want and move what you want to you. All that you have to do is let go while acting on your inner prompts. Let go of fear, doubt, worry, disappointment, and other negative emotions that might make you feel low. The famous poet, Sage Rummy, wrote something that may help you here. Some things that don't happen keep disasters from happening. Think about it. What you're being asked to do is trust. And trust when something happens, it's good. And trust when something that doesn't happen, it's good too. Wayne Dyer has an interesting book out called The Power of Intention. It helps you teach how to get whatever it is that you want. The friend read this book and said the title should be How to Get What You Want from by How to Get What You Want What You Want by Wanting What You Get. How to Get What You Want by Wanting What You Get. Exactly. The trick is manifesting whatever you want is to trust whatever it is that you get. And what you wanted to manifest is the first place. Now what you want, manifest it. You attract it. The more you can understand this balance of wanting and allowing the desiring and letting go, the more you will happily be in every moment. And let me explain this with a story. The Swan. Terry Levine is the world's famous coach, bestseller author, dear friend of mine in early 2004. She was contacted by Fox Television Studios about becoming the coach for one of their new stories. Their, one of their new shows. Terry would be seen weekly in the national television audience. Her name would be become very famous and she wanted to be selected as a coach and as a marketing consultant I wanted it for her as well. After weeks of interviews, emailing, exchanges, hints from the networking leading Terry believed to be she was going to be on a coach for a show, she got a sad call one day that she was turned down. The executives at Fox decided to go in a different route and use a different coach. Terry was upset. You have to understand that Terry was one of the most positive people that I know. She is upbeat, bubbly, cheerfully, and cheery, and always looking at the positive in every situation. But the news of her rejection crushed her. Nothing I could say made her feel better, and this time she let go of the experience from which she would always have filled disappointment. Then, months later, the new Fox show Terry had been considered was aired. It was about average to a homely woman who was transformed with plastic surgery, counseling, and coaching. Terry saw that the show was repulsed by it. She said, It doesn't stand for anything. I believe in it. It would want to associate with... I'm relived that it wasn't chosen to be on it. I sent Terry on an email to one day that so she loved it. It told me that she was keeping in her wisdom folder I had written. Some things that look like they are in our best interest are often not going to serve us when they see when we see the big picture. Some things that we look like that seem might be in our best interest are often not going to serve us in the big picture. We have to trust and let go, realizing that everything that happens is for our highest good. And the secret of T-I-I-S-G. I'm riveted by A Lifetime of Riches, by biography of Napoleon Hill, the author of the classic book Think and Grow Rich. Not only did this man struggle for 20 years to write a definite guide for success, but he experienced poverty from life that threatened his backers. His, his backers were murdered, suffered from bouts of hopelessness, and his family suffered beyond all understanding. His... His was not an overnight success. One thing that stood up in Hill's life story was the ability to turn the negative into a positive. He always looked for some people to call that silver lining in the dark cloud. And also from which Hill's life, I realized it's always noticing the ability to see the good and the bad and practiced by others and with others too. It was the meeting with my friend Mark Joyner, internet pioneer, best-selling author. I overlooked Mark talking to a man who had gone through hell due to the FTC. Mark listened to the man's sad story and then said, turn it into something good. Turn it into something good. This was a remarkable advice. It's
It's kind of the thing Napoleon Hill would have said, and it's against what most people have ever attempted to try. The whole idea is taking whatever happens to you and turning it into something good. Seems at first at glance preposterous, but it also seems to be the key to success.